The first TV release of the year, and it was something unique for sure. With it being a show that as viewers we could watch the episodes in any order, it was focused on a group of people that were brought together to carry out a heist that would see them pocket $7 billion. With us going as far back as 24 years before the event in question, and us also going as far forwards as six months after the heist, we learned so much about these characters, the betrayal that occurred, and especially the main man, Leo, aka Ray, and his family. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from the ending of this show. So let's get into it. Here is Kaleidoscope Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. In terms of the structure in which I watched the show, I watched it in the way that Netflix structured it. I'd say there are a few ways that it makes the most sense to watch this show. One would be in the way that Netflix ordered it for us. Another would be in chronological order of the oldest date to the newest, so from 24 years ago to 6 months after, which I think would actually make a better watch, or starting at the highest and then working backwards. The show is able to be watched in any order because of the time in which all of these events were set and the backstories that we got given. By us seeing motives, relationships being formed, and the time frame in which it was established, it then became easy to follow the story, no matter whether it was past, present, or future. As we embarked on the final episode of the show where the heist took place, we'd seen by that point there was a lot of betrayal that was taking place, and nobody knew what happened and why all of the bonds were missing from the boxes that were placed in the van. Well, we saw that in actual fact it was Hannah, Ray's daughter, who had interfered with the plan that Ray created, and she decided to be more than an inside person and stop the elevator that was lifting it up to the ground level as she, with Liz, put coloured paper inside of the boxes, taking all of the bonds out of it other than the top layer. We saw that she did this because throughout the entirety of the season, she'd warned her father of the danger that he'd be in if he robbed the extremely wealthy and powerful triplets, the three people he was planning on stealing from. She was there for him, just like he was for her in providing a safe space when her mother Lily died. And also, like when he needed somebody in the past when he robbed the club, nobody was there to stop him when deep down it was always the wrong move to do. Hannah had been planning it all along and explained it to the triplets so they were also in on it, meaning that their stolen bonds would essentially be washed, leading the insurance company to settle their losses, which would then mean that the triplets would get richer than they previously were. What happened in the heist was left right down to the wire, but with it being the final episode, it answered all of the questions. One of the biggest things was what was left in Roger's safe. Well, Leo put the diamond necklace that was stolen on the night where they robbed the club that Liddy worked at inside of his safe meaning that the FBI could place him at the crime scene that occurred 24 years ago, allowing Leo to get his revenge, solidifying the meaning of it never being about the money, but it being about more than that and taking down Roger, aka Graham. He wanted to do this before he physically wouldn't be able to due to him having Parkinson's. With Roger being placed at the crime scene, it meant that he then got 20 years in prison. Let's break the rest of the video down by the endings for the rest of the characters. It's probably cleaner to do it that way rather than by episodes. Leo Leo, who was formerly known as Ray, was living a new identity after breaking out of prison for being arrested for the robbery that occurred at the club 24 years in the past where his wife passed away due to being caught up in the fire without anybody knowing. We saw that he was the mastermind behind the robbery in the present day, but for him, it wasn't about the money. It was about him getting revenge on his former partner, Graham, who was now leading a new life as Roger, who was head of SLS, the place where they were going to be robbing. Roger was an unreliable partner, and you could sense the lack of trust that Ray had in him back in the day. But when he saw Roger walk away from his wife that was struggling and dying, he felt as though Roger took everything away from him that night by not helping also leading him to get sent down. We were led to believe that Ray didn't know what happened to the bonds once they went missing, but he knew that his daughter did the right thing by him and was looking out for him, meaning he lied to the rest of the crew. The final scene was of his condition being at its worst, shaking uncontrollably, needing a walking stick, and having a stranger walking behind him where it looked as though he met his fate. It was hard to tell who it was as they were in disguise and it also seemed as though there was no true way of knowing if it was even real or not, as it faded to pink before anything happened. This could have been a visual manifestation of the disease that he had taking its control and him not making it to the end of the tunnel. The only plausible people that could have been after him in reality would have been Roger for landing him in jail, meaning he could have managed to hire somebody from inside, 
or somebody associated to one of the triplets, but I doubt that would be the case as Hannah was in on the plan with them, so I feel it could be a poetic ending for the character. He was saved from endangering himself by the person he cared about most in this world, his daughter, but he couldn't escape the illness that had taken its grasp on him. Judy Judy was known as the chemist of the group and she had a fling with Stan before he went to jail, but then she was married to Bob and got him in on the heist as well. Judy cared deeply about Stan, but also about Bob too, so we saw her sense of conflict throughout the entirety of the series. With her being just as confused as everybody else about the whereabouts of the Bonds as late as six months after the heist, we saw that she committed some dark acts during the heist that we didn't find out about until right at the end. The whereabouts of RJ was something that was on everybody's mind after the heist, and we saw that she actually killed him during it whilst he was standing up for himself against Bob, as he was betraying the entire group and leaving them to get caught. She dumped him in a dumpster which Stan saw and meant that Bob then went after him. Not being able to face Stan being harmed, she took out Bob and believed that she killed him, which then meant that we saw her flee with Stan. It was only once their money ran dry and they were living in a worn down motel that Judy ended up betraying Stan right at the end. She saw that Bob wasn't actually dead and found a bag of money worth $100,000 in his car. Instead of going over to Stan, we saw that she instead looked over at him in the distance and it was then left up to us if she ended up going over to him or if she made the decision to walk out into the open road. Deep down, I don't think she went back to Stan. This was her chance to get some kind of payment for the heist that occurred, and I think she took her chances and ran, leaving Stan on his own, abandoned and penniless. Bob Bob was most definitely the least likable character in the show. He was always setting himself up to betray the group, and he didn't follow the rules that were in place. He seemed like the weak link on multiple occasions. When it came to leaving SLS, he removed the item that acted as a security measure which then meant the alarm sounded and he in turn wanted the rest of the group to get caught, whilst him and Judy could then run off with 7 billion. However, that wasn't the case after Judy took him out. With him not knowing the identity of the person who knocked him out and caused him to lose the ability to speak, he then went on a revenge spree as he felt as though he lost more than money on the heist. He located Judy and Stan where he aimed on taking out Stan, but when he got to the location, the FBI were there and they took him out on the spot, meaning he never got to lay eyes on Judy again or carry out his act of revenge. Stan I thought Stan was a likeable character. He seemed the least criminal out of all of them, and he was love-struck over the short romance that he once had with Judy. He was left penniless, just like the rest of them, and was clueless as to what happened to the money. However, right at the end of the series, we saw his story finish up with him being left on the bench enjoying his food, with Judy looking on, looking as though he was going to be abandoned. So I don't think he got a happy ending either. Ava Ava was a questionable character in the show, and I did wonder if she was loyal to the crew, or if she was genuinely working with the FBI. However, it turned out that she was on the side of the crew, and she was messing with the FBI to buy them time. After battling with the immigration officers to get her nanny to stay, she kept her with her post the heist, where she was also caring for Leo. Her story had a tragic end, where we saw that she died protecting the two people that she cared for, her nanny and Leo. She was killed by one of Bob's henchmen and it left a sad Leo cradling her as he wept, as it felt as though she was the only other person that he loved other than his wife. Hannah Hannah had her own plan and intentions when it came to the heist and she led everybody astray. She wanted to protect her father after forgiving him for what he did many years ago which resulted in the death of her mother. Ray was set on seeking revenge on Roger and was blindsided by the consequences that were at stake for robbing three of the most powerful people that he could possibly rob. So with her creating her own plan in getting Liz a job there, teaming up with the delivery man, the triplets, and washing their bonds, meaning they got more money and grew richer on bonds that were quite controversial and off the market, it meant nobody got harmed that she cared about. She was protecting her father, which I thought was a good twist and something that I didn't expect at all, but it worked out well for her. We also saw right at the end that Hannah also had her baby, something we saw in the first episode. Nazan Nazan was set on finding the truth and was realistically the only good character in the show. However, her searching into finding out more and more information ultimately led her to be taken out by somebody who was involved with the triplets, even after she was warned, just like Ray, to steer clear of them because of how powerful they are, showing that even the good characters don't get happy endings. I thought this show was very good. It was an intelligent piece of television that was performed extremely well and had me hooked from the moment that the first episode played out. 
Ray got his revenge, but he sadly met his fate, along with many of the other people that were in on the heist, showing that as Ray mentioned at the start of the series, once trust is gone, it's gone forever. They turned on each other from the moment that the trust was broken. If Netflix are going to be knocking out shows like this for the rest of the year, then I look forward to more of what's to come. So, there you have it, Kaleidoscope Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions, and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of the ending? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.